Heute fangen wir Today we're beginning a new series called Peacemaking in Conflicts and our first topic is called to be a peacemaker. In our previous church in South Africa, we had a whole year of constant conflict with a key couple in our church. We'd appointed the wrong people to a task and this decision of ours just caused so much conflict that afterwards we said once it was over we will be very careful to ever do something like this again to make a decision like this because one just cannot lead a normal life enjoy a normal life with so much conflict especially as a church leader and also here in our church here in Germany but I'm sure it was like this in the whole world during corona time where we had a lot of conflict it was a difficult time for me in the 20 years of leading this church in Dresden it, it was the, the toughest time and I know how it is to be burdened with conflicts daily it's not not nice at all it distracts from what we should actually be doing and that's why it's so important for me today to focus on this topic today and in the next weeks if you've experienced this you know how tiring and how exhausting it is you'll say i know how this is dealing with conflicts in this way was ist dann so what is a conflict a conflict is the result of a disagreement a clash of goals or a difference in attitude that thwarts another's goals or desires so you have an idea of what you want to do you have an opinion the other one also has an idea or opinions and you can't work together if you're frustrating each other when you never come to agreement and why should we talk about conflicts i find it very important that we deal with this because conflict in our normal life in your job in the school whether you in your workplace or in the church conflict is inevitable we need to see that and accept that this is so and we need to have a plan how we're going to deal with this so that we can avoid the conflict we have different personalities and expectations we men and we women we have communication lacks in some ways how we communicate with each other we have differences in our values the way we've been brought up as children we have limited resources we all know the resources we have and they're different we have different roles we may have had hurts from our pasts that have um, influenced the way we see life today and in a christian context we know that is this all a result of of sin and as a result of the fall of sin these things just lead to conflicts and hurts and and we need to avoid this and so what we want to do is to be able to get together as a team and a team has different members and we have to come to decisions we have to decide which direction we taking we need to organize together what goals we having and this is very difficult when we have different people in the team we have to deal with change change that we want but also change that is imposed on us leicht auf uns dann aufgezwungen ist die corona zeit corona time was a good example of that in our team we had different people we have different people with different backgrounds some come out of south africa some come out of kazakhstan and some come out of austria or west germany east germany and we had different opinions to how we needed to deal with some of these things so most of the the decisions that we or opinions were healthy but there were those things we 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 found difficult to have one common opinion and then of course on top of that we are often led 
where there are lacks and there we can have absolute chaos. If the leadership has lacks, then it can lead to chaos. And when this happens, emotions are released. And these emotions, they trigger things and we've got to control our emotions. And if these emotions are not controlled, we have a problem. Someone says something that isn't nice, that is not necessary. Maybe someone actually belittles someone or says something that isn't said in love. And then the emotions get heated and that's sad. It's actually sad and that means for us as a team, we then take a, a knock and these conflicts, if it continues like that ongoingly and the things are not resolved, we will see that our effectiveness as a team will be hampered. A mentor of mine once said, we must build the church on a platform of peace. If we shed the blood of people, it will limit what God can do with us. And in my leadership in this church, and I believe that for you, wherever you are, you don't want to have the blood of people on your hands, as it were. We want peace to reign. And in this atmosphere of peace, we can be fruitful and we can reach our goals. There are three Bible verses that can really help us to be peacemakers. Matthew 5 verse 9 says, Happy are those who strive for peace, for they will be called children of God. Romans 12 verse 18, Do your part to live in peace with others as much as possible. And then James 3, 17 and 18. But the wisdom that comes from God is above all pure. It seeks peace, is kind and willing to yield. It is characterized by mercy and good deeds. It is impartial and always sincere. And for those who make peace, God sows the fruit to be reaped, justice. So, some tasks for you today to think about. Consider what it means to be a peacemaker. Secondly, are you a peacemaker at heart? Or do you often cause conflicts because you can't control your emotions? And if you are a team leader, thirdly, how do you deal with conflict within the team? And then another question, does everyone have the right attitude or should someone who often triggers conflicts be confronted or maybe in the worst scenario even be removed from the team? This is the homework for you. We are called as Christians to be peacemakers. That is something so wonderful when we are able to do this, when we can live lives of peace and where we in our teams and in our church have peace.